Aaliyah was born seven and a half weeks premature. She spent the first several weeks of her life in an incubator. Early elementary school, she was diagnosed with severe dyslexia and dysgraphia, mild dyscalculia, dyspraxia, and mild ADD. Dyslexia is a very common learning disability shared by around 3 million people. It is defined by Miriam Webster as a variable, often familial learning disability involving difficulties in acquiring and processing language that is typically manifested by a lack of proficiency in reading, spelling, and writing. I am Aaliyah and I am 17 years old. So, when did you realize that something was wrong? Probably when I was set, sat in front of the group of kids in like math class in probably second or third grade and was forced to count to a hundred without looking at the numbers. Everyone else could do it, but I couldn't and I struggled heavily with it. So when were you able to tell that some that you were kind of different or just that something was different about you? Uh, when I was younger, I don't think I could tell because I was younger and thought I was like everyone else, just a child, maybe wasn't too great at much, many things, but uh, now I can kind of tell when it comes to like reading and writing and sitting in a classroom because at this point everyone's at their um, around the same level or a little ahead of each other but there's clearly like the people who don't do well and then the people who excel and I can tell in certain things I'm not good at remembering which is part of dyslexia. Do you think that people have treated you differently than your peers or other people because you have dyslexia? Not what I've noticed because, I mean, it's more of a running joke with my friends and I. Mm. Like we joke around about it, I joke around, it's just a joke. I mean, no one, they're aware I have it and if something comes up they apologize and we're like, oh, I'm sorry, but I mean, they don't. I'm not like pushed aside or ignored because I'm dyslexic. How would you explain dyslexia to somebody who doesn't have it? What I've always thought when um, when I left a day kind of frustrated and such, I always thought of writing down something in the way that I thought I saw it, which was flipping letters around and switching them just doing the weird ways that my brain originally writes things like D's and B's are flipped so on and so forth like the normal things you think of when you think of mis uh, writing with dyslexia um, and then showing it to someone and saying can you read this sometimes I would want to like completely take a whole word invert it show it to them and say can you read this because that's kind of how like you have to break down each part indivi individually to understand the word and just imagine a whole paragraph. <laughs> so what do you, th what would you like people to know about dyslexia? Um, that it's not just letters. It's also the processing of words, memorization, what because, do you mean memorization? Um, remembering things like simple things. Like you, when you have dyslexia, you you may have short-term memory, in a sense. Like, if I'm, if you're trying to remember to do something like take the dog on a walk, you may forget it in like ten or so minutes, and you'll be ending up doing something else that sort of thing. Is there anything else that you think it's important for people to know or that you want people to know about it? 
it's not like a disease. It's just something that people are disabled and they're not fully disabled, they're just incapable to be as the same level as other people. The same level, like, what do you, what do you mean? Um, the same level in the reading and writing and education wise, that level. You'll probably never be on the same level if you have dyslexia. Do you mean they're not as smart? No, I mean that it's hard for those who have dyslexia to do about the same thing as those who do not because it is a disabling disability which causes you to be not as caught up as others. There is, it is possible that you can catch up. You just need to put effort in it. So kind of along the same lines, what, what, do you, what do you not want people, what would you prefer people like not to ask you or to say about you regarding like dyslexia? Um, when someone is aware that I have dyslexia and hands me a book. I mean, this isn't for all dyslexics, but for me, if someone gives me a book and says, read this, I would like you to read it, I will instantly refuse because I just don't like reading. It's a struggle, and when someone is aware of it, it's kind of rude to offer me such a thing. Read it to me if you want me to hear it. So, like, practicing reading isn't something that really makes it more enjoyable for you, or does it make it not any easier? Like. If, if someone were to say, you know, just, just keep reading and you will get better or you will like it or is, what do you think about that? People have suggested me to read stories or read books or do all that type of stuff. It's not enjoyable. <laughs> Putting a book and saying, hey, read this, it's about the most irritating thing because it feels like mini torture. At what point do you think you started to overcome some of the struggles that you once had with dyslexia? Honestly, probably when I got into fourth grade because then there was t people and teachers who knew how to teach disabled kids. I mean, I still tr struggle, and I honestly think I'm not over, I haven't over fully overcover, overcome it, mm -hmm. but it's, it's easier than it was when I was not in fourth grade. And can you remember some of the things that they did, maybe, that helped make it a little more tolerable? <laughs> Giving us fun things to actually read, I mean, generally for any kid, if you give them something more entertaining or fun to read, they'll enjoy it. But, um, it, for me, like, if it's actually an enjoyable book, I'll, I'll read it. Or even what actually truly helps is get doing an audiobook mm -hmm. and reading along with the audiobook. You don't have to read it, but you can kind of hear the words and put the words to that, to the words in the book, mm -hmm. so you can kind of stay with it, and you don't have to read, you just listen. So along that, those same lines, um, can you, you know, name one or a few things that, um, that you think helped you? with being able, making it a little easier to read? Like the, you mentioned the audio books. Um, when there was no audio book, um, my teachers always pressed me to use like uh, a piece of paper or something under the sentence that I'm reading because if you don't do that when you're 
dyslexic, you might end up reading the same sentence over and over again. So they always pushed me to do it, even though I didn't like doing it. They pushed me to do it, and when I did it, I didn't repeat the same sentence. So it's hard then for your eyes to track, maybe, on a, like when you're reading a sentence, is it difficult for your eyes to focus on the, in the words or the, the lines within the paragraph? Uh, in a paragraph, and when there's a bunch of like lines close together, I lose track of where I am and where like that certain thing was it also kind of happens with the piano hmm. like when I'm pressing a key and I want to go one above that key I'll end up doing the same key again because you kind of forget that you just press that key or you just read that certain spot and you reread it again and then you'll think oh this is okay and you'll continue to reread it until you slowly realize I've just read this more than plenty and then you try to find the next line it's just like a, a loop of you're trying to move on but you can't see that there's actually something you could move on from mm. you just see the same thing and what about, um, I remember at some point they had, um, or, or people were talking about different colored paper with words on, like some people had mentioned like, uh, like a light blue or maybe a pale yellow or did, did different colored paper make any difference for you? I was never given light blue or pale yellow. I mean, maybe the yellow, but black on white on like a screen is pretty hard to look at okay. and don't do white on black that's also a no yeah like those such direct I think um, the idea of like a slightly saturated color is that it's less hard on the eyes and less so tra dramatic that your eyes have to like I don't know what's about it but white on uh, black on white is straining to hmm. the eyes and I believe when I use iBooks I always turn it to a slightly toned down color oh uh, maybe the the text or the background the like background. is the, so it's maybe like an ivory like a slightly less white background it's a tannish color oh, okay yeah so yeah the yellow maybe yeah like a pale yellow or something what would you say is the hardest thing for you for having dyslexia Reading and remembering. Reading because it's genuinely hard to do. And remembering because it just makes my memory mem memory so bad. Because um, when I was younger, according to my parents, I dropped off the first parts of words. And we have concluded that it was probably because I didn't remember the first part of the word. And alongside that, I can never remember a name. Once I'm given the name, I will... It takes me over a few, like, a week or two to remember their name. I'll have to ask over and over and over again. Unless it's, like, a really unique or common name for me to remember. Then again... Sometimes that isn't true because it's hard to remember names in general, but things that require me to remember and reading. So what do you think the most common misconception of dyslexia is? It's just letters. It's just letters that people miss, like, accidentally write incorrectly and, like, don't see them quite right, but reading's still okay for them, which is completely a lie. I mean, once again, this depends on how strong dyslexia is in the person, but it doesn't just mean letters. It means a lot more things. It means your memory, your 
actual complete reading skills, your writing skills, your speech skills. It, it affects a lot of that. And are there, there are other aspects to um, the challenges that you have besides dyslexia? Like what are the other um, things with writing that, or with numbers that you kind of mentioned? Um, like the dysgraphia? Dysgraphia, dyscalculia, and dyspraxia. Mm -hmm. Those three others are all uh, dyspraxia and dysgraphia mm -hmm. affects my writing skills. So they both affect how well I write, which makes my handwriting pretty nasty and unpleasing. And yeah, I could still draw, but that's besides the point. Um, and then dyscalculia is like the math version of dyslexia, but I have the lesser version of dyscalculia because I don't struggle that much in math. But I still kind of do the same things with dyscalculia as I would with dyslexia, but instead it would be numbers flip back and forth and all that messed up sort of thing. Do you wish you didn't have dyslexia? No. I actually am perfectly fine with having dyslexia. As though, although sometimes I do wish I didn't have it from pure struggles of reading, but it makes me who I am. I mean, if I didn't have dyslexia, I wouldn't be, wouldn't have met the people in my life, wouldn't have understood certain things and I probably wouldn't be as wouldn't be going into psychology in high school senior year do you think dyslexia gives you advantages of someone over someone maybe who doesn't have it definitely um, in fact it makes you so you can um, I believe it makes someone think very far much outside of the box. Because um, when I was getting tested for this, for dyslexia and disabilities and all that type of stuff, they gave me a puzzle and I was like five-ish, um, like third grade. Um, and I was, they did the puzzle and the puzzle was made for I went up to the age of 18 and I was five-ish. So I had the mind of an 18 year old when I was five. So it doesn't really make the person stupid. It just makes things harder. And I believe those who have dyslexia are brilliant. Like, I, I think they're probably one of the smarter people out there. I mean, if you look at the facts, you see some pretty smart people with dyslexia. Like Steve Jobs, I think he had it, and Einstein. He, he's a specimen of it own, though. <laughs> we don't. He's too smart. So is it, is it possible, or is it maybe common, I guess, that people who have dyslexia might also have other maybe challenges or, or other um, uh, different ways of learning? Definitely. Um, I tend to go into research of my own disabilities myself and it's a common thing to have something alongside dyslexia. Dyslexia being a very common disability um, and then it's common to get other things alongside it, like ADD or ADHD, that's pretty common too. Um, dyspraxia, dys dyscalculia, and dysgraphia, is those, those all are things that came along with my dyslexia, ADD as well. It, it's not like, I don't think it would be something that could fully stand alone because it affects a part of your brain, but I do believe it's possible for you to have just it or some others with it. And is it, 
I mean, like if, if somebody has dyslexia and one of these other, let's say dysgraphia, I mean, is it all the same or is there, um, like, are there, I guess, greater versions of it and, you know, lesser versions of it? Uh, Definitely different versions and greater versions of uh, dyslexia and dyscalculia and dyscalculia. Um, I'm pretty sure for dyslexia because I've talked to people and I've talked to I talked to a girl once and she said she used to have dyslexia. And if you ask me, it doesn't go away. It honestly will never leave you. It's something in your brain. But she claimed it went away, which means she probably had a lesser version of dyslexia. Or she just didn't want to say she had dyslexia. Either one. But I know for sure I have a greater version of dyslexia. And those I've talked to that has dyslexia, which is like a few people. It's it's very varying. Like for some people it can affect the lettering. Some people it affects the lettering and more. Sometimes it's just your left and right trying to figure out which one's which. So if you had a friend or someone that you knew that just found out they had dyslexia or maybe um, a f one of our friends uh, found out their child had dyslexia, what what would you want to say to them? What would you want them to know? I would tell them, well, I would actually ask them a, a question first, which is, what do you struggle in the most? And depending on the answer, I'll say, it's okay. Because <laughs> if they just found out they had dyslexia or something like that, I can't imagine how frustrating that'd be for not knowing why you can't do something. But you can do all these other things. And I just, it's, I mean, if they've gone this long doing well, they'll probably continue to do well. They probably found a way to work around it, solved an issue, but if they haven't, I'd probably suggest them to do things that would be a good idea to try out like for reading, listen to audiobooks, or uh, for remembering things, try to write them down, or do note cards even, or just scream at yourself in the mirror to remember it, I don't know, something. <laughs> and you mentioned um, art like earlier, and is, is that something that you do? I do do it often. Um, it's considered a hobby at the moment since I haven't gone into a job or anything to use it. But it is something I do and it is something I want to go into when I am older, like in college and on and so forth. I've been drawing since I picked up a pencil. Because when you're young, you pick up a pencil and you draw. And then it just evolved from little scribbles to something a little bit more understandable than to very understandable. And it's going to further get better if I continue. And do you find it easier to draw than to like write your name or to, to write a paper? Or The only reason why I'm going to say yes is because I enjoy it. It still strains my hand as much as I, as much as writing does, but with um, art, I have learned that pushing down is not a good idea. And there's different variants of pressures that you should do to get the right thing you want. With writing, I strain my hand so much because I hold onto the pencil so hard, trying to make it look neat and pushing down hard also trying to make it look neat. So that ends up hurting around my thumb area and my wrist, causing it to probably cramp. In art, I just know that I can do it lightly, calmly, and it's 
sort of, and I'm a very messy artist, like, in the way of, not in the way of, there's mess everywhere, that too, but I have a shaky hand, and I think that's from one of the disabilities I have with writing, is that my hand shakes and it's hard to be precise on things. So when I do digital art or when I do uh, traditional, I try to be steady, but with digital, I, I'm not the only one that does it, but you do a line, you undo, you do a line, you undo, and you just repeat that until you like it. With uh, traditional, sometimes my hand just shakes too much. I'm sure I'm not the only one with the shaking hand, though. It's not just a particular disability thing. Okay. Is there anything else that you'd like to say about it or it's, before we close? I wrote a, uh, a, um, an essay on it on disabilities and I want to say that if anything disabilities is more of an enhancer than disabling you just need to use it correctly well thank you